This time it's the turn of Microsoft Defender for Microsoft 365. And specifically, we're going to focus in on threat policies. What are they? How do they work? And as always, what can they do for you? Greetings fellow YouTubers, welcome back to the channel, Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. First up, thank you to everyone who wished me well. Um, last week I've had COVID, I'm just recovering from it, um, but I'm, I'm fighting for it now, we're going to be good uh, and I'm going to start creating more content again. Uh, the second thing I want to mention, by the way, is uh, I got to tell you, I recorded a video uh, just uh, about a week ago, seven days ago, uh, on top tips for Microsoft 365. It's just hit 10K views, and that is my most popular video ever. I couldn't believe it. It's crazy. You know, you record a video that you think is really good, and not many people watch it, and then you record a video that you think is okay and loads of people watch it so i don't know it's a funny world out there isn't it um now on the subject of subscribers you guys are just an absolute bunch of stars um i we've just hit 11k so i gotta take my hat off to you guys thank you so much i can't tell you how much i really do appreciate it and i actually had an interesting comment from somebody saying andy can we just do the demos rather than all the chit chat in between well no is the honest answer uh, and the reason for that is i want this channel to be about community i want to give you guys the opportunity to know me to ask questions and to feel like you're part of something that's what this channel's about if it's just a quick demo that you're looking for i'm sure there's plenty of other channels out there um that said any co questions comments any feedback you know i love it Get them down below and I'll do my best for you. All right. So I think without any more jibber jabber, I think we're going to get into today's topic. Now, Microsoft Defender for 365 has been out around a little while. Um, originally titled ATP or Advanced Threat Protection, it added a couple of new features to the threat protection policies which come part of Microsoft 365. Now, most customers, in fact, all customers, uh, have something called EOP, Exchange Online Protection. And this covers things like anti-malware, antivirus, and so on. And to be fair, out of the box, you get some pretty good policies kind of pre-created. But I thought it would be quite useful to go in and have a look at actually how we can customize them and how you can tailor them really for your needs. Uh, in addition, this session, I'm going to take a look at safe attachments. Absolutely awesome feature, as well as safe links as well. So, I think without any more jibber-jabber, I think it's about time we got to the demos. Enjoy. So, I'm kicking off here in Microsoft 365, and I'm coming down into the Security Admin Center. Now, the Security Admin Center has actually been recently rebranded. It's now part of the Microsoft Defender brand of portals. And you can see that this particular portal is Defender for 365. And what I thought we would do is take a look at some of the most common features in here. And specifically today's session, I want to really kind of focus on this area here. This is policies and rules. And specifically, I want to take a look at some of the threat policies. Now, just before I go into that, I just want to mention a few things. Um, if you have um, a subscription for Microsoft 365 and also things like Defender for Endpoint, if you've got Defender for Endpoint, that would appear here underneath the email and collaboration. So um, the idea is that we have one portal, but depending on the subscriptions that you have, you, yours might look slightly different to this one. Now, if you want to learn about tools like Defender for Endpoint, and let's say Defender for Cloud Apps, I did some uh, videos on those recently on my channel. So please take a look at those. 
Today, what I thought I would do, though, is I would take a look at some of the threat management features. And specifically, I'd like to talk about policies and going into policies. I'm going to talk about threat policies. Now, threat policies are designed to defend your organization to keep you safe. Now, um, really, there's a little bit of confusion out there. So if you have a business account with Microsoft 365, so a business basic, um, not necessarily premium, but also if you've got enterprise and things like that, um, every customer has something called EOP or Exchange Online Protection. And Exchange Online Protection has been around for quite some time and it provides things like anti-phishing, anti-spam and anti-malware policies. Now, in addition, if you have an EMS subscription, Enterprise Mobility and Security, both E3 and E5, then you'll also get safe attachments and also safe links. And you also get this with Business Premium as well. And what I thought I would do is just take a look at some of these features and just make sure that you're managing them in the best way. Now, anti-phishing is particularly powerful, um, specifically because, uh, of course, hackers typically are going to send you fake emails. And fake emails can cause a real nightmare uh, within an organization. Spam makes up for something like 90-odd percent of internet traffic. Uh, and now, although spam is not particularly malicious, um, phishing potentially is. Now, out of the box here, you can see that we have a default anti-phishing policy. So I can go into here and we can have a look at this policy. And you can see that, um, again, um, it, it looks at the or it picks up the settings from the Microsoft Defender. And you can go in, of course, and you can edit these as well. So things like if you want to add in things like trusted senders and trusted domains, that means organizations that you want to communicate with. Um, now, you'll notice here, you can also protect your domain as well. So you can add in any domains that you've added. So if you purchased a domain name called bobsboats.com, uh, it's important that you include your own domains just to make sure that spammers and hackers are not using your domain to spam people. So again, and interestingly, by the way, you notice it's off by default. Now, you can also include custom domains that you purchase as well and any kind of trusted domains. So any you know third party partners, customers, things like that, you can add those in. Now, you'll notice that we have something called mailbox intelligence and mailbox intelligence uh, essentially prevents things like impersonation protection or, or provides impersonation protection, I should say. Uh, and this is really important because uh, spammers, of course, especially things like spear phishing attacks, a spear phishing attack will typically um, an invoice might come in. And it might be from your CIO, your information officer saying, this is a, an invoice, can you please pay it? And of course it's not, it's fake because they're just spoofing your email address. So very, very dangerous. Um, and this um, feature here is absolutely fantastic. So this is the anti-spoofing feature. Now, to be honest, out of the box, it's actually pretty good. But again, you can um, not only configure those spoofing settings, but you can also add, as I said, you've got you can edit those protection uh, settings as well. Now, this is a perfect example of a technology that's managed by AI, artificial intelligence, and of course, machine learning. So that's the anti-phishing policy. Absolutely superb. Um, something else that every customer gets is the anti-spam policy. And the anti-spam policy, like the anti-fish policy, you get a number of default settings here. And really, we have kind of got three core default settings and these really impact everyone so you've got an anti-spam inbound you've got an outbound policy and you've also got something called a connection filter so things like ip addresses 
and also domain names that you might want to block, for example. So um, if I go into the anti-spam outbound policy here, just scroll down and you can see I can go in and I can edit those thresholds here. So you can also block, you know, people from specific countries or contain specific languages and, and things like that, which again are, are pretty good. Now, uh, again, just scrolling down a little bit more, you can also scroll, th you can switch on things like safety tips. Um, you know, if it detects spam, what do you want me to do with it? Put it in the junk folder. We also have something called zero hour auto purge here or zap. And what zap does is if you, a user in your organization has received malicious mail in the past, then machine learning kicks in and says, hang on, this you're trying to resend something something nasty and it won't let a, this happen again so it prevents reoccurrence excellent feature by the way all right um now just out of the box by the way um i'm often asked andy how good is defender in terms of anti-spam and antivirus and malware and things like that actually it uses nine different scanning engines so all your favorite scanning uh, engines from the different vendors um, Microsoft uses all of these all right so definitely take a look at the anti-spam uh, policies now very useful is also the anti-malware policies now uh, to be honest I have a problem with this tool um, you get a default policy for every user it's okay it's okay but I would say that safe attachments are is so much better than this all right it really builds on top of this however i can go into the protection settings here and you can see uh, zap is also on here as well but again things like recipient notifications um so notify recipients if they're um, any email containing malware is quarantined Sender notifications. I love this one, by the way. Uh, notify external senders if their message is successful with, with malware. Mm, maybe not. Okay. Um, again, you've got some admin notifications. So again, you can go ahead and you can customize uh, those settings. Now, out of the box, like I said, it's okay. Um, but if you really want to go much further... I would say that you probably want to take a look at something called Safe Attachments. Now, Safe Attachments is available with Microsoft 365 EMNS. So if you're using E3, EMNS, E5, and also Business Premium, then you'll get Safe Attachments. Um, I was recently in Trondheim in Norway. Here's an attachment uh, policy that I created recently. So I've just given it a description uh, and I've said, hey, I want to include these groups and um, I'm going to go in and edit the different settings. Now, if I just uh, have a look at this, you'll notice that actually there are five different settings here. So in this case, off means attachments will not be scanned. Okay, so if there's malware, it will get through. Monitor. Now, you may want to, for example, create a policy that maybe sits alongside your security team. And in your security team, you might want to do some malware analysis. And if you want to monitor the results of the malware, so if somebody opens up the malware, um, again, it could be a test account, a trial account, this would be used for that. Block. Is exactly as it says on the tin. This would block current on all future uh, message attachments that contain malware. Just It would just kill them dead. These two, however, are really interesting. Um, replace. So what this does is it blocks attachments with detected malware, but continues to deliver the message. So the message is received by the user and the user will see a little message where the attachment was saying something like, hey, this this uh, email contained potential malware, but we've removed it. Yes, get the idea. Now, compare that with this. 
This is called dynamic delivery, and this is my favorite. This is currently in preview, and to be fair, it's been in preview for the last two years. Um, so immediately deliver the message without the attachment, um, and then scan the attachment, and then reattach it. So essentially what happens is the user gets the email minus the attachment, and they'll just get a little message saying, hey, this attachment is being scanned at the moment. We'll reattach it as soon as possible. Okay, and that is how it works. All right, so again, five different settings. Off, monitor, block, replace, and dynamic delivery. Now, if any of you are doing the Microsoft 365 certifications, you always get that question. What's the difference between replace and dynamic delivery? But I got to tell you, if you're in a sensitive environment and you're concerned about malware, this, in my opinion, is an absolutely must-have uh, tool, all right? And you can also create your own quarantine um, uh, policy there as well. Now, the other features in here really are for things like enable redirects. So, for example, you would do this if you were, let's say, monitoring the results um, of a piece of malware. You might want to redirect it to a specific user. That's what that's for. All right. Now, I really like this feature. Definitely check this out. Safe attachments. Um, even if you just um, create a trial tenant just to play with it, um, it's a fantastic feature. All right. Now, the final thing I just want to mention is something called safe links. And again, safe links, incredibly easy. Again, you get a default built-in protection, comes from Microsoft. And um, what this essentially does is Microsoft have a huge catalog of known malicious links, all right? And <clears throat> within that catalog, if any of your users receive any malicious links through any attachments, emails, chats, teams, anything at all, they will get a warning message. And that warning message can either be yellow, uh, and the yellow warning message basically says, hey, you know, this is an unusual link. We're just going to scan it, check that it's okay. If it turns red, it's a known malicious link, all right? Again, this is a fantastic feature, super simple to work. Um, and again, you can uh, create multiple policies um, if you want to. But again, out of the box, to be honest, it's pretty good. Now, uh, again, you've also got some global settings here as well. So global settings for users. So if you wanted to add in kind of a default base of users, um, so you could say settings that apply the content to supported 365 apps. Again, things like link, uh, sorry, uh, links in things like Teams and Microsoft 365 groups and so on. Um, do not track um, protected uh, links in Microsoft 365. So again, um, <clears throat> if, they're if they're known protected, that means don't track them to their source. And that really is just a privacy feature. All right. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, safe links, safe attachments, anti-malware, anti-spam, anti-phishing otherwise known as the threat policies in Microsoft 365 Defender. So there you have it, Microsoft Defender for 365. Absolutely awesome features and definitely easy to implement. Hey, listen, really thank you so much for dropping by. Um, if you've enjoyed this session, bump that like button. It really does make a difference. And of course, if you've not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on future tutorials. And if you have a any questions uh, of course about this or any of my other sessions please just get them down below and i'll do my best all right so until next time you stay safe and i'll see you soon all the best hey thanks so much for dropping by today here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy and while you're here go ahead click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out